Welcome back to part two of my Anacubic Cobra S1 review. If you missed the first part where I set up the printer and covered the basics, please follow the links in the description. Today we're diving deep into the ACE unit, the multi-material system that's supposed to set this printer apart. I'll show you exactly how it performs, the quirks I found, and my final verdict after days of hands-on testing. Let's get straight to what you came here for, the ACE unit. This is Anycubic's answer to Bamboo Labs AMS with multi-filament support and built-in drying. But after putting it through some serious testing, here's what I discovered. I had a few tangles inside the ACE unit when loading a new roll of filament. Sometimes the filament would miss the path and shoot out into the front area and create a tangle. The silver guide bar is easy to remove after undoing the screws at each end. It'll just lift off. So this let me clear all the blockages I experienced fairly quickly. I've now got into the habit of snipping off any bent filament and straighten out the first 100 millimeters or so and make sure when loading you see the filament emerge from the back of the unit. I had one instance where a small piece of filament snapped but I was able to clear that without disassembling the buffer unit. So take your time and be patient while loading the filament into the ACE unit and you shouldn't have any problems. Personally I've found little use for multicolour printing for the work that I do but I tested it with a standard four colour test print that came with the machine. As expected this generated a huge amount of waste. I didn't expect the discrepancy between estimated and actual time. The estimate of this job was for 14 hours and 6 minutes but it actually took 18 hours and 25 minutes. So on to the slicer. After spending hours on this machine, I don't have any real complaints about the slicer. It's a fork of the popular Orca slicer, so the layout feels familiar and logical. Um, but I haven't really used a printer at all before, so it worked for me. I liked how convenient it was. It would um, do the remote print and just push the job across to the printer. So since then, Anycubic have rolled out quite a few upgrades, so now it generally works as it should. When you switch colours, the printer has to purge the old filament. The slicer gives you zero estimation on how much filament you're about to waste in this process. And if possible, I'd recommend that you fill the build plate when doing multicolour work as the waste will be the same for one part as it is for 20 parts. But you're left completely guessing if you have enough filament to finish the job. This 54 gram part generated a 11 gram purge tower and 185 grams of waste. One user reported their 312 gram model burnt through a whopping 730 grams of wasted filament and they only had this information after the print was done. It is great now that you get separate purge settings for each filament and you can only change but you can only change that on the printer's screen not in the software itself. So one user has suggested that this can be reduced to 0.3 but we've yet to test that. So it is possible to reduce the, the wastage by maybe some people have estimated as much as 50%. Purge objects are now supported and this feature lets you print a separate useful object with all the wasted filament. But a printer is more than just a slicer. Now the software headaches are mostly resolved, how does the Cobra S1 actually print? This is where the machine starts to feel misunderstood because when it's on its game, it's really, really good. But be prepared for a learning curve and take it from me, don't touch a thing for a month or so until you know how to resolve common problems because you'll just get yourself in a tangle. The ACE Pro unit that handles the filament is another huge plus and it's also an effective filament dryer which is a fantastic bonus for keeping moisture sensitive materials like PETG and nylon in perfect condition. Keeping filament dry while you print is one of the best ways to boost reliability and quality. Being able to designate a spool as a backup allows seamless changeover if a spool runs out of the filament. Just read the instructions and never ever put TPU through the ACE. 
when using it, I had a few tangles inside the ACE unit when actually just loading the roll of filament. Sometimes the filament would miss the path and shoot out in the front area and get tangled up. But the silver guide bar across the front is easy to remove. You just need to undo the two screws at each end and it will just lift off. This actually let me clear all of the blockages I experienced fairly quickly. So I've now got into the habit of snipping off my bent filament, straighten out the first 100 millimeters or so, and make sure when loading, you see the filament emerge from the back of the unit. I had one instance where a small piece of filament snapped off, but I was able to clear that without disassembling the buffer units at the back. So take your time and be patient while loading the filament into the ACE unit and you shouldn't have any problems. I've found personally that I have little use for multicolour printing in the sort of work that I do, but I decided to test it with a standard four colour print that came with the machine. As expected, it generated a huge amount of waste, but I didn't expect the discrepancy between the estimate and actual time. The estimate was for 14 hours and six minutes, but the actual print time was 18 hours and 25 minutes. But to its credit, it completed over 500 filament swaps during that time without a hitch. Cardboard spools can also cause tangles in the Ace Pro. The, the cardboard fragments and can cause issues. So some users have reported jams and they're more prevalent and they say they're more prevalent in the third and fourth filament slots, but we've had no direct first-hand experience that supports that these slots are any worse than any others. Anycubic provide a file to print rim protectors for cardboard spools on the machine. It didn't fit on a Creality spool that I tried it on, so it must just be for anycubic spools. The printer is smart enough to pause when it detects a jam, but it still requires you to step in and fix it. And then there's connectivity. A lot of users report issues with remote monitoring. I personally am disappointed that the Cobra S1 does not have a network point, which I think should have been standard fare in all of these devices. We've never had any connectivity issues with the device or the app via Wi-Fi. Some users report the camera feed through the app or web browser is frustratingly unreliable, frequently failing to connect. My advice to those users is to get your network house in order and don't necessarily blame the Cobra S1 for this. Firmware and slicer updates are delivered over the air and we've already seen quite a few revisions come through. One thing I miss is the lack of Linux support. So I'm forced to boot into Windows to use this slicer. Because I dual boot between Windows and Linux, Windows has this annoying quirk of not updating the time correctly, and this causes errors with the Anycubic login process. So if you experience this, just correct your time in the Windows control panel and try again. So after all that, where do we land? Is the Anycubic Combra S1 a bad printer, or is it just misunderstood? The truth is it's a bit of both. The bad reputation is earned according to some, but it isn't the whole story. Let's look at the pros. Print quality and speed. For single color prints, this thing is a beast. It's fast, stable, and produces high quality, precise prints. So bang for your buck. The price is hard to argue with. You get a fully enclosed, multicolor Core XY printer for a fraction of what some of the competition charge. The Ace Pro unit. This integrated filament dryer is really a killer feature and it seriously improves reliability with tricky materials. It's just a shame it's so slow when it's changing colors. So all in all, despite its quirks, this is solid hardware, it's well built, and once you learn its tendencies, it's a dependable workhorse. Cons. The slicer. This is probably the big one. The lack of waste estimation and fine tuning for multicolor prints makes its star feature a frustrating and expensive gamble. Fussy filament system. The printer can be picky. Be prepared to troubleshoot occasional clogs and jams, which is not ideal for beginners. I found sometimes that clogging was um, 
was being reported because there wasn't enough attention on the extruder so the the extruder was not able to keep up with the flow of of plastic so then it would fail um, and report a clog so adding some tension solved that problem forever remote monitoring the unreliable app and camera connection reported by users we believe is due to poor wi-fi setup on their network it gets a pass from me and it has been rock solid on my network so is it bad not at all is it must misunderstood absolutely the Cobra S1 isn't a fundamentally broken machine. It's a seriously capable piece of hardware that has a few quirk. It's not an appliance. It's a machine. Listen to it, whisper to it, and it will treat you well. Just do a bed level and pressure test with every print so the hot end can set itself up for optimal performance. The bad reputation, I believe, comes almost entirely from a few dissatisfied users where others have happily printed thousands of hours on the S1. Future upgrades. Look, save your money for now until you really understand this unit. There are plenty of upgrade options. I'm just sticking with the standard machine for a while. I've not seen any bed adhesion issues that could warrant third party bed upgrades as of yet. So there's additional aftermarket nozzles or hot ends, and they're available in a range of, um, of nozzle diameters. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0.8. There's also some ceramic hot ends, but be prepared to make changes to settings to get them to run reliably. Also be prepared to replace the hot end heatsink paste on some of these aftermarket cheaply manufactured hot ends. There's an aluminium bed brace and there's an aluminium build platform that's eight millimeters thick. And there's also a range of additional textured build plates. So there's plenty of options to grow with you as you grow, but just don't upgrade for upgrade's sake. Just make sure that you know what you're doing and you have a reason to do what you want to do. Who is this printer for? This brings us to the most important question. Should you buy it? This really depends on what kind of user you are. The Anycubic Cobra S1 is for the machine whisperer. It's for the hobbyist who has some 3D printing experience or some other um, handyman type experience and doesn't mind getting their hands dirty solving problems. If you value hardware performance and want to save a lot of money, this could be a phenomenal machine for you. This printer is probably not for the absolute beginner who wants something just works out of the box. It's not for the person who wants to hit print and walk away without a second thought. So start with a single color printer in that case and save your money in the beginning. And it's probably not for a business or print farm where predictable material costs and bulletproof reliability are non-negotiable. The fiddly, time-consuming steps to service the printhead means there are better choices for production work. You might well be better off spending the extra money on a rival machine. The Anycubic Cobra S1 Combo is a fantastic bit of hardware. It has incredible potential but you have to be willing to unlock it. The machine itself is practically begging to be great, but it's shackled by a difficult to service printhead. But would I buy one again? Absolutely. So what's your take? Have you used the Cobra S1? Is it a bargain or a bust? Let me know your experience in the comments below. If this video has helped you out, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more honest reviews where we find out what these machines are really like. And if you are in the market, follow the links in the description to get a discount I've been able to negotiate for you. Happy printing.